So time now to talk to one man who's a very familiar face when it comes to the FIFA World Cup and the Socceroos adore him, Australian legend Tim Cahill. And he's got five World Cup goals to his name. So no better person to talk to us about the FIFA World Cup and definitely the one that will be happening here. Um, Tim, thank you very much. You're welcome to TV3. Thank you. I know that everyone is buzzing. Things are going on pretty well. Is it going to be the best World Cup yet? I think... Um it's exciting, you know, to be able to finally be here <clears throat> um, and especially after countries not being able to travel for so many years uh, to host the biggest tournament in the world in Qatar. First of its kind in, in, in the Middle East is exciting because we're sitting in a stadium now, it's air conditioned, um, the facilities, everything's being prepared, everything around the World Cup, it's the fan experience now, it's all about fans coming, enjoying the hospitality, the culture, the people. And the most important thing is the football, you know, uh, is the group games and, and every country fighting it out to, to get through their group and hopefully do something special. You've taken a look at the groups, which group do you think do you fancy? Which group are you looking forward to? Look, I'm biased because I have to obviously look at Australia and we have France and um, Denmark and Tunisia and also with working in Qatar it's also good to keep a close eye on Qatar who have Ecuador, Netherlands uh, and Senegal. Um, I have a lot of friends playing in this tournament, a lot of uh, presidents of the federations that I'm close with and it'll be great to see Cameroon do well, obviously Ghana knowing a few of the players, Wakaso has just signed for our Belgium club which is exciting, Andre Ou plays in the league. Uh, many African countries with Mane coming here as well. Uh, it, it'll be exciting to see a lot of international talent on show, but talent that's ready to come and perform straight away from their league fresh. So, yeah, it's going to be a, a really I'm, impressive. I'm coming from Ghana. It's good you mentioned Andre, you mentioned Wakasi, and also um, <clears throat> Sadio Mane as well. What, what do you think these players represent, especially for the African teams? I think they represent um, a pathway for the boys and girls back home in their countries to aspire to. They're going to be playing on these pitches, inspiring the next generation, and the kids are going to be home within their cities thinking that could be me one, one day to their parents. And when you have players like this doing the business, playing in the biggest leagues in the world and playing professionally, um, it's an opportunity for them to say, like, hopefully one day they'll get that chance. And... Uh, they're close friends, um, Samuel Eto'o the same, he's now ex-player going into the president of his federation. It's great to see ex-footballers become executives to go to the next level and to um, help their country on all levels of growth across football. Talk to us about um, playing at the World Cup. Obviously you have seen it all. What should be the mindset for the players who will be coming to Qatar? And also the legacy do you think this World Cup will live? I think personally for players, you have a responsibility to represent your country. Everything you do, your badge, this is, um, you represent a population. When I speak to the Australian national team and to the players, you know the jersey is just with the players for the time being. They don't own the jersey. Doesn't matter how good you are, I played in four World Cups. It was never my jersey. It was a jersey that I wore in that time that will be passed on to the next generation. I think the mindset for the whole World Cup is to make it a good experience for your fans, something to remember. And also, you can't win everything. You have to understand that there is a winner and a loser and that um, the game, that's what brings the passion and the excitement. So for the fans traveling here, just enjoy it. You know, enjoy the, the, everything it has to offer and then also to go and take in the culture and the experiences. Um, and I'm thankful that I've lived here for three years and I'm having a great time and I'm looking forward to getting some downtime to watch some football. Before I let you go, you, you have been here, like you said. Um, do you think we're going to get the same passion that we've seen in previous World Cups? I think it's going to be more. I think it's going to be more passion because Qatar is sort of like the hub of the world. When you talk about airlines, Qatar Airways, this is where everyone stops. It's connected to Europe, connected everywhere, India. You're going to have a lot of traffic coming in from all over. And I say Australia, to travel from Australia is 15 hours. You sleep overnight and you're here in the morning. So for me, it's actually easier. Um, I've played in, you know, many World Cups with a lot of travel, even during the tournament. So, um, yeah, I think this is going to be very busy and it's already shown with ticket sales that it's going through the roof. So 
after a pandemic, I think this is definitely what the world needs is football. Outside Australia, which team are you taking to win the World Cup and your player of the tournament? <clears throat> Outside chances would be uh, England. I think England, with the preparations and everything that to take into account, um, I think with the league just being around the corner, all the players in the same country pretty much travel here seven hours. It's set up with the Euros they have, with the squad they have, they're fully loaded. The group is difficult, but something where England will be confident of going through. And then after that comes down to tactics. Um, player of the tournament would probably be someone like Harry Kane or Mbappe. They always choke, they say in England, that they always get there and they choke. Do you think they can push through this time? I think after the performance at the Euros um, and the timing of the calendar, the schedule for England, this benefits them as well as Europe. But I mean, for the strongest league in the world, with all these players starting the season, Harry Kane's starting to score a few goals, the players are starting to hit form. Two months, they'll be here and we'll be able to see if it comes true. Any revelation of the tournament, young player? Young player, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure. You know, for, for me, honestly, you always have your Mbappes and players like this. But um, hopefully we see uh, an African team in the final as well. That's a revelation. Which African team? I have to say Samuelito. Obviously, they're all my brothers when it comes to Ghana and Senegal. Look, with Africa, you always represent one place. So whoever it is, as long as it's someone. Tim, thank you very much thank for you. talking to us on TV. Thank you very much. Thank you.